Welcome to the video on graphing linear equations. Now we're going to cover two methods plus refer back to the previous video on sequences. Now this first method is the y equals mx plus c method. Now this is very similar to what you did in linear sequences. Now if you remember from the linear sequence video, or if you don't, you were given a sequence of numbers 11, 15, 19, 23 and 27. Now in addition to putting these in an equation, you can actually plot these on a graph, the same as you can plot your equation on a graph. So let's look at how we do that. Now in a graph we have our set of axes. We have our vertical axes which are called our y axes and our horizontal axes called our x axes. Now if you remember back to our linear sequences video, you put 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 in the x column of your table. And that's why we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 down on the x column at the bottom of this graph. And you put the sequence, the 11, 15, 19, 23 and 27 in the y column of your table. And that is what's going to be on the y axis of your graph. So how would you actually go about plotting this? Well first of all, the first term in our sequence when x was 1 was 11. So we go to 1, we go to 11 and we plot a point with an x. Then we do the same with 15, that's the second term in our sequence and it goes up to 15, so we plot that point. The third term is 19, so we plot that point. The fourth term, 23, and the fifth term is 27. Now having plotted all of these points, you could just rule a line straight through them and you would have your graph. But what we're going to focus on a little bit more today is the equation we got out of this sequence. If you remember correctly, you found out that y equals 4x plus 7 when you used your y equals mx plus c equation with this linear sequence. So we can go straight from this equation to plotting this exact same graph. So let's look at how we do that now. The first thing you need to look at is this c value, this y-intercept. This c is plus 7 and this is your start point. So we're going to go to our graph, we're going to go to plus 7 on the graph and we're going to mark it. That is our starting point, our number by itself, the c. Then once we know our start point, we're going to look at the gradient. Now hopefully you'll remember from the first video that gradient equals rise divided by run. So all we need to know is what is the rise, what is the run, and we can plot those points on the graph. So remember gradient goes before the x, that's the 4. But hold on a second, that gives us a rise but there's no divided by run. If you have a number by itself, like a 4 here, always put divided by 1. It's always 1 if it's not given to you. If there's no number at all in front of the x, so it's just y equals x plus 7, then both the rise and the run would be 1. So if there isn't a number, put a 1. So let's see how do we use this. We know we've started at 7 on our graph, so now we rise up 4, because we have a rise of 4. Then we go across 1 because we have a run of 1. So rising up 4 from 7 gets us up to 11, across 1, moves us across to here, and we mark that second point. Once we've marked these two points where we started, we've gone our rise and we've done our run, and we mark our second point, now we can just rule a line straight through those points and you've drawn your graph from the equation, just by starting at the C and going rising and running from your gradient. Now, if you'll notice from your graph, all the other points from the sequence should fit on this exact same line if you've ruled it straight. So all of these things, the sequences and the equation, work together. So that is the first method. That's called the y equals mx plus c method. So m being your gradient and c being your y-intercept, where you start. Our second method is called the cover-up method. Now, we use this because not everything is in the format of y equals mx plus c. So you might get something like this, which is 4x plus 3y equals 12. That's not written in a y equals mx plus c format. Now you can use algebra to rearrange this, but it's hard. So there's an easier way. The cover-up method allows us to find y and x, and we can plot these on the graph. So the perk is to find y, you just cover up x. Now all that we have to discover is 3 times what equals 12. And just to write this out again without the hand being in the way, 3y equals 12. Now to solve for y, you have to divide both sides by 3. So y equals 12 divided by 3, and if you can do maths, you'll know that that equals 4. So y equals 4. All we have to do is go to the y-axis and plot on y equals 4. 
We can do the same thing if we want to find x. We just cover up the y now. So we have 4x equals 12. To find x, we just divide both sides by 4. And suddenly, 12 divided by 4, like you'll know, gives us x equals 3. So we plot the 3 on the x-axis. Now that we have two points, we just rule a line straight through them. There is our answer done. I want to show you one more version of this cover-up because sometimes you can be asked to rearrange before you even do cover-up. You'll notice here that we have the x and the y on the same side and this is going to be your goal with the cover-up method. So if I gave you a tricky equation like 8y equals 16 plus 4x, you'll notice that the x and the y are on different sides. We want to put them on the same side. So we're going to put this 4x on the other side of the equal sign. And we do this by taking 4x away on both sides. Taking 4x away gives us minus 4x, because we've taken it away on both sides, plus 8y, which we already had on the side of the equal sign, and leaves us with 16, because now our 4x is gone. After this first step, it's exactly the same. So we can cover up x to find y, leaving us with 8y equals 16. And those of you will know that y equals 16 divided by 8 gives us 2. So we can plot this 2 on the y-axis. Next, to find x, we cover up y, leaving us with negative 4x equals 16. Now, x equals 16 divided by negative 4. And if you're not comfortable with negatives, just put it in your calculator, but that'll give you an answer of negative 4, which means we need to plot negative 4 on the x-axis. Now that you have your two points, just draw a line straight through them, and you have your answer. If you're not quite sure how to rearrange this, or that didn't seem clear to you, Please watch the Solving Linear Equations video in Algebra, because that will explain things. Alright, what you need to know from this, you need to know that there are two methods. The first method is your y equals mx plus c. You know that c is the y-intercept, and you know that m is the gradient. Now your first step is to plot your y-intercept, that's going to be at negative 2, because c is negative 2. Your next step is going to be plotting the rise over run, the gradient. Now that's 4 over 1, because remember, anything we don't know is over 1. So we go up 4, and then across 1. Now that we have our two points, we rule a line through it, and there is our answer. The second method is the cover-up method. If you want to find y, you've got to cover up x, or make it equal 0, when you plot the point. So half of y equals 4, so y must equal 8. We plot that point on the graph. In this case, again, to find x, we make y equal 0, or cover up y. That gives us negative x equals 4, so x would equal negative 4. We plot that on the graph, and we have our two points. Now we can rule a line straight through them. And that is our second answer. Let's look at a question now. In this question, a box contains 25 small chocolate bars. Jacinda eats 5 every evening. Good for you, Jacinda. And this can be modelled by the equation y equals negative 5x plus 25. Our job is to plot the graph. So here we have our equation, we've got our axes. First of all, we start at the y-intercept. We know that's positive 25 because it's been given to us. We plot that. Then, knowing the y equals mx plus c method, we're going to look at our gradient. Now they haven't given us a run, so we know it must be over 1. So our rise is negative 5, meaning we go down 5. And our run is 1 because they haven't given it to us. So we can plot our second point. Now that we know our two points, we can draw our line. And this makes sense, because if she starts with 25 chocolate bars, which we've plotted, and she eats 5 on the first night, she goes down to 20. When she eats another 5 on the next night, goes down to 15, and so on and so on. Until finally, there's none left. Now just to point something out on this graph very quickly, Jacinda starts off with 25 chocolate bars, and finishes with 0 chocolate bars. But we've drawn a line that goes negative. She can't actually have a negative number of chocolate bars down here. And she doesn't have a negative number of nights. She can't go back in time to previous evenings. So we're just going to miss those ones out. There we have our graph. That is our answer to our NCEA question. You don't need to include all of those crosses, all of those points. But to have a beautiful graph with nice boundaries on either side, there's your answer. And that's what you want to get to.